So now we're going to simplify some radical expressions. So we will be looking for perfect factors that can come out of the radical. So the first example we have is the square root of 12. And so the square root of 12, we are going to look for factors of 12 that are also perfect squares. So 12 is the same thing as 4 times 3. I know it's the same thing as 6 times 2 or 12 times 1. But in none of those other examples is one of the factors a perfect square. In this case, my 4 is a perfect square. And we know from our multiplying section, if we break this apart, it's equivalent. So I can write that as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 4 we know, it's 2. The square root of 3 just tags along. Next example, it's a cube root of 72. So now instead of looking for perfect squares, I'm going to look for perfect cubes. Whatever the index is, that tells you what kind of perfect factors you need. So cubed roots, you need perfect cubes. So maybe you're going to jot down some perfect cubes just to jog your memory. So 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27. Maybe you'll use your calculator to help you along. Unless you say, hey, wait a minute, 8 goes into 72. So we could write this, like cubed root of, 8 times, right, its partner is 9. Break it apart. Cubed root of 8 times the cubed root of 9. Be sure to carry along your little cubing symbol, or cubed root symbol. Cubed root of 8 is, again, 2. And then the cubed root of 9, we don't know. It's not a perfect cube. It is a perfect square, grant you that. But we were only interested in cubes this time. Okay. Why don't you hit pause and see if you can handle the square root of 700 to simplify. Okay, unpause, here we go. The perfect square factor uh, 7 times 100, square root of 7 times square root of 100. Right there's my perfect square. I'll write it in front. So square root of 100 is 10, square root of 7, right? It's an irrational number. We don't know what it is. It would have to be a decimal, and we don't want decimals. We want exact answers. And so those typically will have these radicals in them. OK, so now we're going to get into the variable types. So these are a little bit harder to see, so I might use a little brute force method um, to get us going here. So this brute force method would have worked for the, the first three that we did. So I'm just going to draw one great big radical, and I'm going to prime factor. I'm going to write out all the prime factors of everything underneath my radical symbol. So 25 prime factored is 5 times 5, and x cubed would be x times x times x. OK, now since we are looking for square root, I need perfect squares. I need two of the same factor to break free. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to circle all the pairs of identical factors I have. Right, so I have two fives. There's one perfect pair. It gets to move out front. I'll go ahead and go on this side. This is where my answer is going to go. So these two fives, they're a pair. They break free, come out in front. Here's a pair of x's, right? Two exactly the same factor underneath. These guys break out. As they break out, it's just one, right? An x to the first. I have this leftover x. That one stays under the radical and tags along. So this is the simplified version of the square root of 25x cubed. It's 5x times the square root of x. Okay. So let's try it on the next one. So we'll prime factor everything, write it all out. I kind of, I'll call this the brute force method sometimes because after you do maybe five or six of them using the brute force method with these variable expressions underneath, you'll see a pattern that will make it a little bit easier. Okay, so 72, um, let's see, 36 times 2, 
Okay, and then 36, I have a little workspace over here. 36 is um, 6 times 6, so I have 2 times 6 times 6, so 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2. Okay, oh gosh, and then I have all of those x's, and I have x times x for my x squared, and I have 5y, so y, 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 and everybody's multiplying, right? Okay, so we're looking for perfect squares. I need two of the same factor to break free. I'm going to try to squeeze my answer in right below here. So let's see, I've got a 2 and a 2. They come out as 1. I have a 3 and a 3. They come out as a 3, right, 1, 3. This 2 here, right, I still have a 2 factor underneath. I don't have any more 2, so that's going to be left over. I'll have to remember to go back and get that. Let's see my x's. There's a pair of x's that can come out. And let's see y's. There's one pair that comes out. And here's another pair that comes out. And I don't have any more pairs, any more right, groups of two factors underneath. So I'll go ahead and draw my radical symbol. Everybody still under stays under. And the only other step we're going to do is just tidy up all that stuff out in front. So I have 2 times 3 times x times y times y, and then a radical 2y. So this here is the simplified version of square root of 72 x squared y to the fifth. Okay, two more examples. I'm not sure I'm up for another brute force method. Okay, maybe one, and then the next one, the last one, we'll try and um, see if we can see that pattern. Okay, I'll change color so this next one stands out. So I have a cubed root of a to the fourth, b to the fifth, c to the sixth. Cubed roots, I need three of the same. I bet I'm going to have to go all the way across. Okay, a to the fourth, a times a times a times a, b to the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, c to the sixth, two, three, four, five, six. It is cube roots, so I'm looking for three of the same. There's one group of three of A's that come out. A leftover A, no other twos that'll match with it. B's, let's see, there's a group of three, comes out. Two left, not in a third one, I need three to break free. C's, here we go, there's a three that come out. Um, here's another three that comes out, all my C's are gone underneath. Right there. Everybody escaped to the front. So now the radical symbol, anybody who got left behind, A and B times B. I'll write that as B squared. So that last step of just tidying up the stuff out in front. So I have A times B times C times C. So A, B, C squared. And then square root of A, B squared. So do you see that pattern that we're, we can use to simplify the variables underneath? Notice I had an a to the fourth. I was looking for perfect cubes. Okay. So right, I could take three of the four out as one, and that left a one underneath. The three, right, it's almost like a, a divide and a subtract, or a subtract and a divide. How many threes go into five nicely? Right, so that this b to the fifth, I was thinking of as a b cubed times b squared. Right, so the perfect cube comes out as a b. The b squared got left. My c to the sixth, well, that's a c cubed times a c cubed. Right, two perfect cubed c's, they come out as that c squared. Okay, so let's see. If you're not ready for it, just brute force it, get a big long line, write them all small, and circle groups of five. Okay. If you want to rewrite it, so now I would write the x to the seventh, I'm looking for fifths. So there's an x to the fifth, it's left over would be x squared. Ten, five goes into ten nicely, that means all the y's come out. So how about a y to the fifth times a y to the fifth? c to the 13th, so that would be 
How about z to the fifth times z to the fifth times z cubed? Um, you might recall multiplying like bases at the powers to go backwards. Okay. Everybody that's to the fifth, it breaks through the fifth root, comes out singular. x to the first, y to the fifth comes out y to the first, y to the fifth comes out y to the first. Let's see, so I took care of this one, I took care of these guys. z to the fifth comes out, z to the fifth comes out, took care of those two, and Go ahead and write that left over a little fifth in there. I have an x squared. I have a z cubed underneath. Last step and we're done. x out front, y times y is y squared, z times z is z squared. Radical, squeeze your little five in, x squared, z cubed.